Section 2.2 is on properties of exponents and multiplying polynomials. We're going to begin with part A on properties of exponents. Some definitions to start us off. First, in the expression b to the n, b is called the base and n is called the exponent. We're going to write a few things that have been written in exponential form in repeated multiplication form and then we're going to simplify them. So when you see something like 3, uh, negative 3 to the 4th, that 4th power is just on the 3. So in repeat multiplication form, this would be negative 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So there is one negative and four threes repeated. So in simplified form, this would be negative 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. So negative 81. If I have negative 3 in parentheses to the 4th, that means the same thing as negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. In this case, 4 negatives, which makes a positive, 81. That's been drilled into us for a while, but let's look at how that works with variables. If I see something like 2x to the 5th, that means 2 times x times x times x times x times x. The simplified form is 2x to the 5th. And if you see in parentheses 2x to the 5th, that means 2x times 2x times 2x times 2x times 2x. This one is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32x to the 5th. Okay. Now, oftentimes at this point, we realize the big difference between having something in parentheses and having something not in parentheses. It seems most natural that only the x is to the 5th is not in parentheses. And that is the reason, actually, that only the 3 is to the power, not the negative. It seems a little more natural to us with variables, but this is the same reason for the negative case and the variable case. Okay. So again, that warning, watch out for negatives being outside of a parenthesis that trips a lot of people up. Okay. All right, so last two examples here, I want to simplify 5x squared. 5x squared without parentheses is actually simplified. It is 5x squared, but in parentheses, this is... 5x times 5x, or 25x squared. Oops, 25x squared. Okay, so now we're going to develop a few rules and properties of exponents. So in the first example, how many 5s are being multiplied in the expression 5 squared times 5 to the 6th? Now, first of all, 5 squared is 5 times 5. Second of all, 5 to the 6th is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So all together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5s we multiplied together, that's 5 to the 8th. Now, comparing exponents, if you had 5 squared and 5 to the 6th, and you wanted to conclude that it was 5 to the 8th, you would conclude that you would need to add those powers together. There are two 5s here and six more here for a total of 8. That brings us to our first rule, the product property for exponents. It says that if you have b to the m times b to the n, that gives you b to the m plus n. You have m b's here, n more here, a total of m plus n b's. This is our first property of exponents. We're going to use this property to multiply these statements down here, a through d. In the first one, 3x times 7x to the fourth. When I multiply these together, I multiply by part. I multiply the numbers together and then the variables together. So the first piece, 3 times 7 gives me 21. Then x times x to the fourth, 1x here, 4 more here, gives me x to the fifth or 1 plus 4 is 5 power. If the invisible power on that first x is 1, I want to add it to my 4 to get 5. So final answer on that one, 21x to the fifth. Part B, multiply your numbers. So we've got 4x to the fifth times negative 6x to the third. That's going to give me negative 24 from 4 times negative 6. x to the 5 plus 3 will be x to the eighth. Part C, numbers first, so 4 
times negative 2 is negative 8. x to the 3 plus 2, so x to the 5th. y to the 5 plus 1, so y to the 6th. And our last one, part D. x to the 2nd times x to the 6th times x to the 3rd. So x to the 2nd and x to the 6th, 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 3 more. It's going to be x to the 11th. I can add three up just as easily as I can add two. Let's flip on to the back side of this page. Note that in order to add or subtract, terms must be like terms. But when multiplying, this is not necessary. You can add or subtract only like terms, but you can multiply anything. So compare. 9x plus 9x adds to 18x. You don't change x when you are adding, but when you multiply them, 9x times 9x is 81x squared. The terms change. 1 plus 1 is 2, so I have x to the second power. x to the fourth, x to the third cannot be added. I cannot simplify this one because they're not like terms. But 2x to the 4th times 8x to the 3rd is possible. I can multiply anything. So 2 times 8 is 16. x to the 4th times x to the 3rd is x to the 7th. Okay. 3x squared minus 8x squared. These terms are like 3 minus, five, uh, minus 8 is negative 5. x squared. Keep the term if you're adding or subtracting like terms. If you're multiplying, multiply the numbers, multiply the variables. 3 times 8, that's going to be negative 24. x squared times x squared, 2 plus 2 is x to the 4th. Term stays the same, x squared when you're adding. Term changes when you're multiplying. Okay, next, these two terms, 7x squared and y squared, are not like because the variables are different, so I cannot simplify by addition or subtraction. However, if I'm multiplying them, it doesn't matter if the variables are different, I can always multiply. 7 times 7 is going to be negative 49. The number of x's in total is x squared. The number of y's in total is y squared. So I end up with negative 49 x squared, y squared. Got our next page. The next rule of exponents. First, I can write xy to the fourth as xy times xy times xy times xy. Altogether, I've got x, 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 I've got x to the fourth. Altogether, I've got y to the fourth. This brings us to the next rule that if you have a product to a power, you can distribute that power across each part of the product. x, y to the fourth is x to the fourth, y to the fourth. So the rule says a, b to the n is a to the n, b to the n. This is our rule for raising a product to a power. So I want to simplify each of these. If I have x, y to the fifth, that would be x to the fifth, y to the fifth. If you have 2x to the 6th, that would be 2 to the 6th, x to the 6th. Then since 2 was a number, you can compute 2 to the 6th, which is 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. 2 to the 6th is 64. You can also check that on your calculator okay, by doing 2 to the 6th and you get 64. So we've got 64 x to the 6th there. Next, negative 4p all to the 3rd. So the number, negative 4, will be raised to the 3rd. p will be raised to the 3rd. So negative 4 to the 3rd, 3 negatives make that negative. And 4 to the 3rd is uh, also 64. You can check that as well. So if you raise negative 4 to the 3rd power, it's negative 64. And then the p will say to the third. 
Last for part D. I need negative 2 to the 4th, y to the 4th. I know that 4 negatives will make a positive. So when I have 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16, y to the 4th, positive. The next rule is going to come from the fact that if you have x over y to the third, that's x over y times x over y times x over y, which then equals x to the third over y to the third. So just like before, you can distribute a power over multiplication. You can also distribute a power over division. So I can raise a product to a power or I can raise a quotient to a power by distributing that power. x to the n over y to the n is x to the n over y to the n. Very, very similar to the rule above on this page. Okay, So x over y to the fifth will be equal to x to the fifth over y to the fifth. And x over 4 to the third will be equal to x to the third over 4 to the third. 4 to the third is numeric, so you can simplify that one as x to the third over 64. Let's flip to the next page. A new rule. We can simplify x to the fifth over x to the third by writing it out. 5x is in the top, 3 in the denominator, and you can reduce each of the ones in the top with each of the ones in the bottom until it leaves you just 2x's in the numerator. So this would reduce to just x squared. Now comparing those values, 5 on top, 3 on bottom, 5 minus 3 is 2. So we can conclude that this subtracts to x to the 5 minus 3 equals x squared. So my rule is going to be that if you have x to the m in the numerator, x to the n in the denominator, that reduces to x to the m minus n. So we're going to use this property a few times here, a through d. The first one, when you see the numbers 6 and 9, they reduce like normal numbers, and the powers are going to use this quotient property for exponents. So the numbers 6 and 9, they can both be divided by 3, so it reduces to 2 thirds if you divide 6 by 3 and 9 by 3, then you would subtract the powers. So it's going to reduce to 2 thirds x to the 7 minus 4 is 3. Okay. The next one, oh, numbers just treat them like normal. 4 sixths you can divide by 2, so you get 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Then for your variables, 2 thirds x to the 9 minus 7 is 2. y to the 5 minus 2 is 3. I just want to note that if you have a fraction like this, it's okay to either write it as 2 thirds x squared y cubed or to put the x's and the y's in the numerator to write it as 2x squared y cubed over 3. These are both acceptable. And actually, the one that we're going to prefer as we move on is probably the second one, probably to keep that 3 in the denominator everything. But they both do mean the same thing. Okay, let's continue to the next one. We're going to reduce our fraction. 20 and 15 can both be divided by 5. If you divide by 5, you get 4 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator. So this is going to give me 4 thirds, and then a to the 5th over a to the 6th is a to the 2nd. b to the 5th over b, subtract 5 minus 1 is going to give you b to the 4th. On the last one here, part d, if I reduce 35 and 20 by 5 each, it's going to give me 35 divided by 5 is 7. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Don't forget your negative. It's going to be negative 7 fourths. x to the 10 over x to the 8. Subtract. 10 minus 8 is x squared. y to the 5th over y to the 9th. Now, in this case, that is going to force me to leave the y's in the bottom. So I, I notice that I have a larger number of y's in the denominator right here. This is why I sometimes like to write things in this larger fraction type rather than the smaller fraction type because these y's need to stay in the denominator. It's going to leave me with 1 over y to the fourth. Uh, always subtract larger number minus smaller number and then place that it puts the smaller number 
is the place where your value needs to be. So it's nine minus five is four. This actually can't be left this way. If you have a variable in the denominator, you need to write it in this format. So I'm gonna rewrite this as negative seven x squared over four y to the fourth. That would be a simplified final answer. I had a higher number of x's in the numerator, 10 over eight, the x's remain in the numerator, and a higher number of y's in the denominator, so the y's remain in the denominator. We're gonna get an additional rule down here about raising a power to a power. We could simplify x squared to the sixth by writing it out. That would, sorry, x squared to the fourth. It'd be x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared. So two, four, six, eight. This is the same thing as x to the eighth. And you can conclude that those powers, two times four give you eight. So x to the m to the n is x to the m times n. This is our raising a power to a power rule. So two parts in the bottom here. X to the third to the fifth will be X to the three times five is 15th. And B to the fourth to the seventh will be B to the four times seven is 28. Okay, another page. On this page, we're going to summarize all of the exponent rules that we have seen so far. So we've got a few examples right here. We're gonna simplify the example and then we're gonna write the rule in words then in symbols. So x to, or a to the fourth to the second. Four a's here, two a's here gives me a to the sixth. So the rule is when variables are multiplied, when uh, variables of the same base are multiplied. Variables of the same base are multiplied. We're going to add the exponents. And the rule, b to the m times b to the n is b to the m plus n. We saw that rule once before, but we're gonna summarize them so we see them all in one place here. Next, x to the fifth over x to the second, that reduces to x to the third. Similar rule, so when variables with the same base are divided, we subtract the exponents. So b to the m over b to the n is b to the m minus n. Next, x, y to the fourth. That's gonna simplify as x to the fourth, y to the fourth. The rule in words is that you can distribute an exponent over multiplication. And that rule is BC to the N is B to the N, C to the N. Similarly, R over S to the third is R to the third over S to the third. Similarly, you can distribute an exponent over division. So B over C to the N is B to the N over C to the N. And last so far, we have that Y to the fourth to the third is Y to the four times three or Y to the 12th. The rule is that when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, the exponents multiply. So b to the m to the n is b to the m n, b to the m times n. That summarizes the uh, five rules that we currently know. Okay. Now note that all of these rules 
only apply to multiplication and division. There are no additions or subtractions between different terms. That would be something separate, and that would only work if you had like terms. So a power expression is an expression that contains one or more powers, and our power expressions are going to be considered simplified if, a couple conditions here, first it contains no parentheses, Second, if any monomial term appears at most once, so for example, you would have to simplify x to the third times x to the fifth as x to the eighth, combine them into a single x. And last, if each numeric expression such as 5 squared has been calculated and each numeric fraction has been simplified, so your 5 squared you would simplify to 25, and if you had a fraction you would make sure that you wrote it in lowest terms. Okay. So you have several uh, simplification to do on the back side here. We need to make sure that we follow order of operations. So if there is a parenthesis with a power on it, we're going to do that first. Then we're going to get to the outside piece. So we're going to make sure that we distribute any outside power on this parenthesis first into everything on the inside distributed across that multiplication. So I'm going to have 5x to the 6th y times 3 squared you can go ahead and just say 9 for that. 3 squared is 9. Then you have x to the third squared. Multiply those powers. It's going to give you x to the sixth. y to the fifth squared is going to give you y to the tenth. Okay. Last, finish the multiplication. 5 times 9 is 45. x to the sixth times x to the sixth is x to the twelfth. Those add up. y times y to the tenth is y to the eleventh. Those add up. In part B, I have a power on a parenthesis, so I'm going to distribute that power across the multiplication. That's going to give me first 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. x to the 5th cubed, that'll be x to the 5 times 3, or x to the 15th. And y to the 2 cubed, so y to the 2 times 3 is y to the 6th. using my rules from the previous side. Part C, I've got powers on both of these parentheses, so we're going to distribute each of those first. So first, b to the fifth to the third would be b to the fifteenth. c to the second to the third would be c to the sixth times b to the fourth to the fifth would be b to the twentieth. c to the eighth to the fifth would be c to the fortieth. Then add your powers to combine the b's. b to the 15th to the times b to the 20th would be b to the 35th. c to the 6th times c to the 40th would be c to the 46th. In part d, I have a, dis a division to distribute across. And in the denominator of this, I also have a multiplication. So I'm going to distribute to all three pieces here. That's going to be x to the 5th to the 4th multiply. That's x to the 20th over 8 to the 4th. I don't know that off the top of my head, so let's find out. 8 to the 4th is 4,096, and then y to the 4th. So I'm going to distribute this 3 power in part E across any multiplication and any division. So it's going to go to all parts of the numerator and all parts of the denominator. So we have 4 cubed, that's 64, x to the 7 times 3 is 21, 3 cubed, that's 27, y to the 5 times 3 is 15, and w to the third. Anytime that you have a fraction, you should be checking first to make sure that the fraction itself is simplified. That one was, and once the fraction inside is simplified, you're going to want to distribute your exponent. You always follow the order of operations. Inside a parenthesis comes first, then exponents. Okay. In part F, exponents first. So let's distribute that exponent of 3 to the 7, the F, and to the G. That's going to give us negative 3F to the 4th. Set times 7 to the 3rd, I don't know that one, so let's look it up. 7 to the 3rd is 343. F to the 2nd cubed is going to be F to the 6th. G to the 7th cubed is going to be G to the 21st. Then finish your multiplication. 
I need negative 3 times 343. That gives me negative 1029. F to the 4 plus 6 is 10. And G is going to stay to the 21. There are no additional G's to combine. The last two on this page. I notice right away that even though I have a power to work with, the inside of this parenthesis is not simplified. So I'm going to begin by simplifying the inside of this parenthesis. For example, I can reduce the fraction 6 over 8 by dividing them both by 2. That's going to give me 3 over 4. And if I reduce the variables, I'm going to get that 3 on the top, that 4 on the bottom. The a's will reduce, 5 on top, 2 on bottom. That's going to subtract to 3 on the top, so a cubed on top. I'm going to be left with b to the third on top. I'm left with c to the fifth on the bottom. All of that needs to be squared still. Now square each term separately across the multiplication and the division. The 3 squared is 9. a cubed squared, multiply those powers, that's a to the sixth. b cubed squared, so b to the sixth. 4 squared is 16, c to the 5th squared, so multiply those powers, that's c to the 10th. Check that you have each variable a, b, c written one time, so that is simplified. Okay. In our last one here, the first thing to do is to work on your power. There's only one power outside of a parenthesis, so that's our first step. x to the 3rd cubed, multiply those powers, that's x to the 9th, y to the 3rd, times x to the fourth, y to the fifth, over x, y squared. Finish the numerator, then get to the denominator. So in the, in the numerator, x to the ninth times x to the fourth, that's x to the thirteenth, y to the third, y to the fifth, add those up, y to the eighth, over x, y squared, finally reduce. Notice that the numerator contains the highest powers in both x and y, so you're going to simplify to um, a solid value, you're not going to be a fraction anymore. You're going to have x to the 13th minus 1 is x to the 12th, no denominator left. y to the 8th over y squared, that subtracts to y to the 6th. The denominator is simplified out to 1. So we'll continue the section in part 2.